Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri, and is the world's first single barrel only liquor store. This business is owned and operated by Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to sign up for their email and text distribution list. That way you'll know what they have in stock, what classes are coming up, and what barrel picks they have in the works. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for yourself, a customized gift, or logo items for your business or event, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. Use the number two when you type out The Bar to Go. Did you know Neely Family Distillery now ships its popular distilled spirits directly to you? To order, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we discuss whether or not bourbon is still the spirit for the masses. My name is McNeil. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Kathy Cole and Phil Collin. Hey, everyone. What's up? Hello. Hello. So, yeah, we're going to be talking about bourbon. Is it still the spirit for the masses? We'll get to that after the break. For right now, McNew said there's something she want to talk about. What is that, McNew? Okay. So, earlier this week, guys, I had to go to a funeral. Not a big deal to me, but it's like kind of one of those, like, you have to make an appearance to make the appearance, right? But do you think it is normal or expected to bring a flask to a funeral? Ooh, loaded question. And there's a whole lot of caveats there. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. That's I the agree. thing. There are, there are a lot of caveats, but I if just... I kick it tomorrow, everybody bring a flask, right? Yeah, you know, no, if, if, if you're going to your course. grandma's funeral, probably not a flask. We're bringing whole bottles to your funeral. Like, yes, exactly. That's not a flask situation. Have fun. But, have yeah. fun. I had fun in my life. Have fun in my death. Uh, please, yes, please. Bring you whole bottles to your funeral. Flask, I, 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 I've, I've thought I've lived as much as anybody needs to live. If I go tomorrow, <laughs> I just go tomorrow. Don't so, worry about it. Again. I feel like fine. if we were. If we were I'll writing near Abbey, if, if we were a more cultured sort with, with better feet in the ground and we were writing the advice columns in the paper, they would say a resounding no. Yeah, um, actually, my family has always tailgated. So you don't <laughs> just bring a flask, you bring a cooler. You bring a cooler. Okay. I love that. I would so, say the funeral home might have a problem with you bringing in a. They have cooler. had problems with it. Yeah, well, there you go. I, I, I you just put know. it in a different bottle. I, I'm from a it's small town, and our funeral home literally just says, you're paying us, we're going to look the other direction. They don't yeah, we've it. always tailgated. Uh, <laughs> okay, what if what if you had, by marriage, like a great aunt or something like that, that was a teetotaler, didn't like drinking or anything? Would you, uh, she no. was like Southern Baptist, <laughs> or, would you, would you drink a that and have a cheers with her because just she needs to on it and stuff? Yeah. No, oh, that's good. because that's here's good. my thing. My Please. thing is I, I had to go like, to a get funeral. The, to get the dead right in. Yeah. yeah. I did not care for, but my cousins did. My aunt did. That was their family member. I was related by marriage. So I, I had to go and make an appearance. But like funerals are for the living, right? They're for the living. Like yeah. you have to oh, go yeah. say like nice When I'm dead, I'm dead. I mean, that's it. Yeah. Oh, fuck. I, well, so I don't care what the hell you do. I, really. uh, yeah. So like I brought a flask because I'm like, you know, like my cousin might want to drink. I, I want to drink because I have to deal with people hugging me and I don't like that. And my mom was mad at me. She was like, why did you bring a flask? I'm like, because people are touching me and I don't want to do that. And she's like, and I was like, he's sad. He needs a drink. Like I'm, I'm helping people. Like I just think it's fine to bring one just in case. I think that's fine. But <laughs> I'm on team McNew with this. I think yeah. that it's a celebration, and if you find celebration in sharing a toast, sure. I think that's a great honor. I'm on team better safe than sorry. I wouldn't bring one, but if offered a poll from a neighboring flask, I'd take it without even oh, asking. you're such a inside. chicken. Oh, so or a gentleman, perhaps. Like, we, we, didn't, 
literal in like such a weird way like where we did like no scripture we did not have a future like we just like got up and told stories about him and then when we got to the cemetery like my cousins who drank beer drank beer I drank what I drank like we all like we just drank together at the uh, cemetery but I went to a funeral this week where they're like, Oh, we're going to do like the traditional shit. And I'm like, well, I have a flask mm-hmm. if anybody wants it. And I'm like, my mom was so mad at me. She's like, not everybody does that. I was like, well, we do that. <laughs> And I was like, I don't, I don't you know. know. I don't know. I don't know what the funerals I go to. I, I'm kind of out of the funeral business, really. I mean, I, oh, you know. they they have become a thing in my life. I don't want to. No, no, I don't want to. I don't want anything I, to do with the funeral. I like the stage of life right now, but no disrespect, yeah. folks. Uh, you know, I just don't do get. I don't get into the funeral stuff. I, if I'm yeah, there, I'm so. uncomfortable. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, no, nobody's comfortable. comfortable. It would be more alarming. Uh, but I've been guilty of it. I'm so comfortable. This is my my. I know that. Let me tell you something. I worked in corporate America. There's people who live for fucking funerals. They, they go to funerals every week. They, look, the, the they look in the paper and be like, Hi. Wait, a second. wait a second. That that person used to go to my church. I got to go to the no, funeral. No, they, no there's they, people who love just, fucking funerals. 100%. Yeah. 100%. No, I, I just showed up to make an appearance because my brother was busy and my mom was like, one of you have to fucking show up. So I guess that's me. So I, uh, I just had to make the appearance sort of thing. No. And I was like, well, yeah. you know, people are sad. Is anybody here read the obituaries and like actively search no i don't read negative either I, no nope. i figure if I, someone I kicks it, someone's, gonna me. Me. <laughs> yeah, someone's gonna tell me someone's gonna tell me my mom will tell me if i need to know about it <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, my mom's the conduit for family stuff and all that but you know what we never got together as a family since I was like seven years old. They stopped doing all because it was too much at the holidays and all that. So fuck them. Why do, why do I, they don't want to get together for Christmas when we're living. Why the fuck do I want to go to their funeral? No, fuck yeah. them. They, they, they had their chance. They're like yeah, the that, dinosaurs. So, they died my, off. My thing is, is, if my mom says, will you please go? I was like, yes, I will. I but otherwise, know. like I'm not spending the money on flowers. I'm not taking the time off work. I going. The only stuff I get roped into, we got a bunch of family. Yeah, There's nothing no, like Kathy. And like, and my, I'm worried about my mom daughter, driving around where she so doesn't know where she's going. So I'm like, all right, I'll drive you. And then I have to go to these things. It's oh, terrible. No. So that fucking happened. If it's in too, South County, she's on her own. She can go there. No. Yeah. So this <laughs> happened too, because the calling or viewing, whatever the fuck you call it, wherever you are, was the night before and my mom says i can't drive at night well yeah there you go that me. gets you get roped into this god shit. damn i was like when did this become my problem that you can't drive at night apparently it just did so yeah. that's that's my life now is that's driving my goes. mom at night to funerals yeah that's how shit <laughs> yeah. goes that's how they that's how your parents get you roped into shit you still they don't want to do, do it. as an and adult this- yeah. No, because my brother chose to have kids, six of them, oh. and now he oh he's too busy. Oh, trust me, trust me, McNew. He, he only spending a couple hours at a funeral is way easier than having six kids. Uh, no, I know you he made the right lives, choice. He lives five minutes from her. Maybe. I live thirty. My sister moved to Alaska. She's so having to do shit. <laughs> My mom puts me on a guilt trip for anything I don't want to go to. My sister doesn't get dick because she lives in Alaska. It's like, oh, it's fine. Oh, so I got to do all the shit for everything because I chose to be here and help support you. So I get all the guilt, too. He's only five minutes away, but, oh, he has a thing at the school tonight. I'm 30 minutes away. Maybe I want to, like, Let me tell you something. Your brother could probably use the break from those six kids. Fuck Yeah. yeah. He'll drive your mom to the funeral. Just no, ask. No. Six give kids them, is a lot of kids. Give, yeah, give them the lot. pass. Give them the pass. It's, Help them out. No, give them no, all the house. No. Thir- five minutes versus 30. Now I'm her problem at night. I'm. Oh. She's my problem at night. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. We got to celebrate oh, our parents. Got to celebrate this our parents. This from the original question, but it worked yeah. out. Especially yeah. drink up at the funerals. That's my opinion. There you go. Always there drink at a funeral. It's time to drink now. I'll go first. I've got the Planters, Ozark Highland, ABV Barrel Shop pick. Oh, well, how about that? Oh yeah, explosive, explosive. That's probably going to be enough uh, because it was bought at the ABV Barrel Shop. It's just it's explosive. All right, Kathy, you're you're up first. Um, so I'm going to give you a run for your money. I, I also so. have something that I got at the AB, ABV oh, well, okay. Barrel That's Shop just wild. today. All right, I haven't opened it yet. Puncher's chance. Puncher's chance. Come on. Oh, oh. Uh, it sounded like it was uh, bought at the ABV Barrel Shop for sure. That takes the lead. Takes also, the lead. we should give Tony some credit. Tony works there. Tony, yeah, Tony. Tony, Tony found Tony, this. Yeah, Tony. Yeah. Tony got that for us. Yeah, he hunted yeah. it down. Tony hunted that down for us. Done, Tony. Yeah. Good job. 
Yeah, we got lost in the Ozarks for a while. So, yeah. All right, McNeil, how about you? What do you got? Um, so this was not a ABB barrel shop pick, but it Same. was an Indiana bourbon shop pick, and it is bourbon Rubenesque from Wood Hat. They did oh. a pick there. Okay. Indiana Bourbon Club. Okay. Nah, not enough to take over the lead. Uh, we did hear it, but uh, not enough. Kathy's got the lead. All right, Phil, you're last but not least. A while back, I was talking to Eddie Russell, and he said, Phil, I have a question for you. What would you think about a 12-year Russell's Reserve? I said, not enough, Eddie. Keep in the barrel one more. You got to keep going. So we've got the Russell's Reserve 13-year here. Okay, thanks to thanks to you. Yeah, so, one more year is my yeah. advice. Ah, no. Oh, was no that was terrible. terrible. And the that whole story, too. Yeah, the story was better than the pop, so cheers, guys. <laughs> cheers. All right, we'll take a quick break, and then when we come ba back, I don't know what Where? happened there. What? I don't know what happened there. Uh, we're going to be talking about bourbon. Is it still the spirit for the masses, or is it not? We'll do that in just a few. Let's talk about the people who make these shows happen. First up is the ABV Barrel Shop. It is the most unique shopping experience in the world of bourbon as the ABV Barrel Shop only sells single barrels, owners Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott select. With over 100 distilleries on board to sell us barrels, we are home to the most unique and diverse barrel pick selections in the bourbon world. By signing up for our email, you will always know what we have in stock. In addition to the single barrels, we'll have a gift shop featuring ABV Barrel Shop as well as ABV Network merchandise. We are partnering with vendors like Art Eatables and Old Man Bay Signs to bring you unique items you can't find anywhere else. We will also have a 24C classroom where we are offering educational and fun classes like Breakfast and Bourbon, a series where we pair donuts and bourbon, customer barrel picks, and opportunities to learn from master distillers and other bourbon dignitaries. Best of all, we feature a tasting bar where you can try before you buy. All of this is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri. If you are in the St. Louis area, please stop by to say hi. If you're traveling in from outside the area, please take advantage of our hotel rates with the Drury Inn and Pear Tree Inn less than a mile from our shop. This can be done via the links in our Visit St. Louis section on our website. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to plan your trip. The ABV Barrel Shop, it's where single barrels live. Hi, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network. We're sponsored by the Staven Thief Society. This is where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge a bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my Executive Bourbon Steward Certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification program available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the Society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Okay, let's talk about the Neely Family Distillery. In 2018, I met Royce Neely at an industry event. He started appearing on our shows and we became friends during my frequent trips to Kentucky. Today, he is amongst the leaders of young distillers, leaving their mark on the bourbon industry. A visit to Neely Family Distillery yields insight on their unique family history, why their products are special, and gives you the opportunity to taste their whiskey, moonshine, and creams. Check them out at neelyfamilydistillery.com or visit them in Sparta, Kentucky. Go ahead, Danny. Is there something you need to say? Just sitting there saying that, uh, plain and simple, uh, if you're sending it me to a text, you need to tell me you need to send it to me on a text. So, I, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today, we are talking about bourbon was once a spirit for the masses. Is it still? Yes, we are. So, you know, I saw this uh, in an article recently, and, and they use the old school term. I, I'm just saying for the masses, they're like, is it still the common man's drink? Uh, I, I don't think that's right, because it's men and women equal, but basically yeah. at this point. So is it still, and I hate to say the common person too, so the spirit for the masses. Is it the spirit for the masses, or or has something overtaken it? What, what, so what do we didn't think? something outsell bourbon? Tequila. Tequila. Yeah, tequila. <laughs> was it tequila? Yeah, it vodka always has, and now tequila uh, has tequila. Yeah. yeah. I know a lot of people are drinking the tequila, like sipping it, not shooting it anymore. Yeah. So yeah. tequila refined itself. Tequila came into like a nice drinking 
drink. I, but, but that's fine. But I think 95% of what drives it is the, the, just still more and more One, excitement for the two, margarita. Three yeah. floor. Right. So here's the, the thing though. So bourbon used to be, so I got into bourbon heavy in like 2017, right? Where I could walk into like my Meyer, my grocery store, because we can do that in Indiana by liquor at a grocery store. And I could buy like a Henry McKenna for $20. And that's not the case yes. anymore. So right. I, I don't know, like it used to be like, oh, I'm just like a basic person with a basic job. I can afford to buy this. I can afford to enjoy it. Has it became unaffordable for the normal yes. person? That's unattainable. Yeah. yeah unattainable. I, I, I would say yes. And here's what I mean by that. Because you could still go to the store and, and find uh, bourbon under $25. That is good. But that's great. That's great. Fine. That's great. But how many could you find? seven years ago, uh, the under $25. And the ones that now have changed, like Henry McKenna, like you said, and all these other ones yeah. that, that, that uh, the Heaven Hill, Bottled and Bond, uh, na- there's ones that drop off that list, but do any new ones get added that are good in the under 25 category? Yes. No, no. Sure. What, what's been added recently in the last five years, under $25 in bourbon? Well, I didn't do my homework and, and bring a specified list. Name there. one. Just, I uh, just want one. I mean... Well, it's always been there, but old granddad one fourteen. That's is, not. Is, that is not. That, that is not new. That, that, that's what. That, that, you didn't even want to finish my sentence. That brand it's, is as old as can be. I'm saying yes. So if but if they decide to raise that where it's a forty dollar bourbon, then it's gone. There won't be another one coming in. So every time we lose one, can you give me a thirty seven dollar mark instead of the twenty five? Oh my god. Yeah. 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 This, 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 well, it's under a hundred dollars. It's a value bourbon. It's, this is uh, what I want to say. This is what I want to say. Oh. We used to have this thing where it was like a value bourbon is like 25 or under. And we could list so many things that were right. so good. I now don't think 50. we can do that show anymore. I don't yeah. think we can do that. And I think I value away. bourbons are like 50 bucks. Yeah. yeah no. So, so yeah, it escalated in the five years I've been here. It has escalated to 25 to 50. And people's budgets have gotten smaller for reasons or whatever. I don't know. We're not snobby like the Scotch people, but bourbon is becoming a thing of the classes instead of the masses. I and disagree. I, I, I am adamant about this. I For every Henry McKenna we have, for every Blanche, for every bottle that's disappeared or gone up in price, for everything we lament that's gone off the shelf, combined with every new release that's from Fourgate, the blue run that has a starting point in the three right. figures, there are just so many amazing options out there. That, yeah, they're not in the $25 range, but they're in the $35 range. And we're living in a truly golden age of whiskey where not only are there are a lot of picks on the shelf, but so many of them are good. And the good ones that are new are only getting better. Look at brands like Green River comes to the top of my mind. New yeah. Riff. We were talking about Hard Truth just a while ago. I think this has never been a better time for American whiskey beauty product than masses. And yeah, maybe you're right that the under 25 bottle is the thing of the past, but that may have less to do with the demand for... Um, you know, but the, the economy and, and just inflation and production costs and such like that, then it has to do with those shelf guys going away. I think it's an amazing time to be a bourbon it fan. It is an amazing time to be a bourbon fan, but is it to something those for the masses? Staples. The Elijah think, Craig small batch, the four rows of small batch, they're not going anywhere. They're 33 bucks. I think it's great. And there's great stuff out there, but what if, what are the masses going to buy? Are they buying beer? No, I, so, like, are they I buying can, white claw? I can only I speak for me. Well, unfortunately, uh, yeah, a lot. Uh, so, uh, canned cocktails is is a segment that didn't really. I mean, it was it was there, uh, but so minuscule. You can't really talk yeah. about it. So five I years ago, it's huge now. It's huge. My wife had a canned cocktail at night. She had a gimlet. They're she had a gimlet. Yeah. yeah. No, so I think we have to define the masses. What are the masses? Are they actual bourbon fans, or uh, is it the mass population that? Like, I want to find. I, I think. I think the masses. I think the masses like the canned cocktails. I also think they yes. like those super sugary flavored ones, like screwball and oh like my God. fireball. Yeah. Okay, that, that, fireball. That's the masses. Here's that's the, the masses. I'm, if you don't believe I'm it, with, Steve, with the masses, they're that's the masses. People. They're people that are not educated. That's where they're at now. They care about bourbon. Bourbon's not their hobby. Bourbon's not like a second side hustle for them. The masses are people that are like. Oh, bourbon's fun. When is I bourbon bad? Bourbon. Is bourbon and that good? Yeah, no, but no, it's... I think that that's the masses, and I don't. I think bourbon has surpassed that people. I think bourbon is for the people who have maybe made that's it just a hobby. natural growth. Yeah, maybe. But were those same yeah. masses ever into bourbon? Were those same masses that were the you know the Sex and the City cocktail 
the the gin and yeah, vodka the cocktails. Girls, were they yeah. ever? Yeah, Girl. the Cosmo. Were they ever the Bourbon Crew? Were, were, was in the regard you're talking about? Was Bourbon in that regard ever? At least in the last 25 years, the drink of the masses. I think so. Yes. I think the last five to ten years, yes, and I think we've surpassed. And that. now we've lost them. We not lost them. You're going to be a little, a little bit more elite. And again, maybe that's just yeah. the natural progression of things. And maybe you have to do that as I don't you want mature. my bourbon to be elite. I want the elitist snobs to take their preferences also, elsewhere. Yeah, and, and I agree with Phil. I don't <laughs> want that. I want bourbon to be for normal people. I want to get off work and go to a, like a dive bar and get like a good drink of bur- get a good pour of bourbon. I want bourbon to be for like the working people, the good people, the people that just want to enjoy things. I don't want it to be snobby like scotch or wine. Right. And I think we're headed that way. And I don't love that. Yeah. It's almost getting the point. uh, Boy, you got to be so careful if you go to a bourbon bar, because Mm -hmm. how many things can you get where it's just a neat pour and it costs more (laughs) than the, the, the bottle, you know, here is anything you get is $25 for a pour. So that's a problem. And it's it's the worst offenders are the ones who aren't bourbon bars. who don't seem to know much about bourbon, but know that they can make a pretty penny because they've heard of the bottle and they they triple the price. It should be, which is a shame because I'll give you credit on this one. 10 years ago, those same bars that also at the time didn't know much about bourbon just took the cost of the bottle and divided it up and you can yeah. get really affordable for us. Exactly. So that, that is a pain that and, you go to bars that don't that have a That touches the menu. masses, the bar, the bar menus a, touch the masses. Yeah. They have yeah. a limited bourbon menu. There's some good selections on there, but they're re- absurdly overpriced and you're like, well, I'm not going to have that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I go to, you know, a great bourbon bar, unless I'm, unless they've really got something that I've been dying to try and just haven't been able to find. I mean, I'll just go as basic as I can, like Maker's Mark. I, I mean, I'll just, and I'm not sitting in my house ever just drinking Maker's Mark, right. but I mean, I'll go to the bar and I'll drink it because I, I don't want to spend $35 or $40 no. on a pour of no. stuff I've got at the house yeah. in multiple bottles. It's, yeah. it's, 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 but those are unique us problems, like, right, Steve? Those, that's kind of like, <laughs> right? not everyone. We're not really talking to the people right now. No, but here's the thing. Like, you can go to like a hotel bar or like a basic restaurant bar and be like, give me a Makers on the Rocks. It'll be like $12. Mm-hmm. I'm fine for paying $12. But if you're going to start charging me 25, I'm like, I'll just go buy a bottle and drink in my room. Like yeah. make it accessible to normal people. Like we want that's drink- what starts to happen as yeah. it becomes more elite. Uh, you know, you start getting, you know, so what's the next sure. step then? What's the next step? I, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I haven't been through this before, but yeah. Because we're getting more and more distilleries. Yeah. So like, so we thing- can get more and yeah. more on the market. But yeah. So what's, like, how do we say, how do we fix it? We want bourbon to be accessible to the masses, right? I want normal people to drink bourbon, to love bourbon, to go on the tours, to listen to the podcast, to do the thing. How do we bring it back? I, I, think I guess we, we need to make sure we're not, we're not being too elite ourselves. That, uh, mm-hmm. that the time, the time that we're drinking very old Barton, uh, you know, hundred proof or, or whatever it is, your, your value, bourbon, you make sure you're, you're, you're buying <laughs> those. I would yeah. love to be able to find a very old Barton hundred proof. Well, they're what under twenty five dollar oh, bottle Kathy, do you guys miss the most? I, that you used to love that you can't get anymore. Kathy, I know a place. I will buy. Kathy, I know bottles. a place. Well, I will get you. I'll buy a case. Yeah. Okay. I used to buy that Henry McKenna uh, for twenty five bucks at uh, Total yeah. Wine. Actually, I buy the case, six yeah. bottles at a time, twenty five yeah. bucks. It was nice. Oh, yeah. I yeah. got one of those for tasting uh, the other day. We did a wonderful uh, blind tasting of Kentucky ten year bourbons, and I wanted to have that one on there. Uh, the venue couldn't secure it, so I did. I found a local shop I know that had it. Eighty bucks. Eighty bucks. I, I didn't yeah. want to pay it, but I had to have it for the tasting. Right, right. So what are you going to do? So, yeah. I never yeah. saw the McKenna for under twenty-five. So cheers to you. I always saw it around thirty, thirty-five. I, you know, the, I just feel like some of them, at least in my mind, have gone up in price where they've exceeded their value. McKenna for me is one that just, oh, completely has begun to exceed his value. Another one I used to buy for thirty-five dollars, and people are oh, just an old guy complaining. But Blanton's, and again, yeah, yeah. I, I won't talk about how much how easy it was for me to find, but it was thirty-five dollars. And you know what? Today I, I get prices need to go up forty-five, fifty bucks, even sixty-five. But the people that buy Buy it for three hundred dollars and two hundred fifty dollars. I don't understand how they can sleep at night. I, I, it's not a three hundred dollar bourbon. It's not. There's the old joke about that, right? Do you know how they sleep at night? How on a giant pillow made of money? <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. I, I, you know, but that's not the case. So we we got a guy today come in to, to the to the shop. So he comes in and he looks around at what we got. And he's like, I really like Kentucky bourbon. 
And I said, well, we've got a couple of great ones here. We've got uh, we've got this Puncher's Chance, which is a, a, a Kentucky bourbon, and it is really a big name. And I told him, you know, who it was. And then I said, we've also got uh, MB Roland, which was the original uh, craft bourbon. Now, now I'm not talking about the you know the heritage brand. I said when, when in 2009 the first craft in Kentucky was MB Roland. So I, we've got some great examples of Kentucky whiskey here. And he looks around, and then he gives me the smug. Uh, thank you. Good luck uh, in your business. And, uh, so he starts walking out the door. He starts walking out the door, and I said, "Well, I'm surprised you didn't didn't want to uh, ask me about any of the Blantons." He's like, "You got Blantons?" And I said, "No, we don't. Thank you. Thank you for coming in." <laughs> it was so great. I buzz, and he's like, "I don't." He, and then he then he starts having to, and then he wants to have a conversation with. Me. He's like, "You know, I I've got that. I don't I don't want that. I've got friends that I buy stuff for, and and they they want it. that's why oh, I." Yeah. Interesting. I was like, I was like, man, your head was on a swivel as soon as I said Blanton's. That's hilarious. And he left out. I'm sure he hates me, but uh, I, I didn't care. I'm, you got your joy for the day. Find joy uh, in every day, Steve. And I had witnesses. I had witnesses. So I, I had uh, I had uh, people in there when I did it, and they were they were dying laughing about it, which made it all worthwhile in my mind. So yeah, fun stuff. On that note, we'll wrap this one up. As we talk about where people can find us, Phil, we're going to start with you. Where can people find you? That was a hot topic. For more hot takes, follow me on Twitter. <laughs> are, are you really got that many hot takes out there? It's usually just pretty fun stuff. Sometimes it's about <laughs> cereal or the okay. life of raising an eight and a six-year-old uh, at, Der at Derby City, Phil. And on yeah. Instagram, too, with clickety-click and the photos, all that oh, good stuff. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. No, yeah. Phil does have one of my favorite Instagrams. Follow him there. Oh, thank Follow you. Follow Phil. There you go. I love yeah. his photos. Derby City <laughs> Phil. Yeah. Kathy, how about you? You can find me on Instagram under KK Cask Strength. McNew. I'm on Instagram at McNeil ABB. For me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got a company website. That thing's abvnetwork.com. Check it out. Everything that we do is out there. Previous shows, blogs, so much more, abvnetwork.com. Come by and see us, ABV Barrel Shop. Maybe you want to check out our Blantons. Maybe I'll show you some. Maybe we won't. But come by and see <laughs> abvbarrelshop.com. McNew, anything else to say before we get out of here? I would like to remind the audience to so please give us a five-star review. That includes comments. It helps the people find the show, which is very important to us. And if you like what we're doing, yes, you please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the ABV Network. Great job today, gang. Finance will have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye, everyone. Cheers. Peace. Before we finish the show, let's talk about some great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you want to experiment on the stove in your kitchen or you're looking for a bigger setup in your backyard, owner Russell Creed and his team can help. They have multiple still offerings, accessories, and even grain from their partners at Goldstone Mill to assist you in making whiskey on par with your favorite distillery. They can also help you with some fabricated parts you probably can't make yourself if you are attempting a DIY still project. Learn more or order your still or parts at moonshinestillpro.com. Last but not least is the ABV Barrel Shop. While we don't get to play in the allocated bourbon game because we aren't selling the other products you have to do to get those, we do have access via our friendships in the bourbon industry to some really cool stuff. Have you ever seen your favorite craft distiller selling some really cool limited offerings only in their gift shop? I'm talking things like the Hazmat offering Distillery 291 did for their 10th anniversary or Neely Family Distillery's Papaw's Birthday Barrel. They don't have enough of it to send it out to distributors, so they only sell it via their gift shop. Well, companies like Distillery 291 and Neely Family Distillery have agreed to sell us two or three cases of these offerings moving forward, meaning our store will have the access to some of the rarest whiskeys in the world. Way more difficult to come by than the allocated bourbon offerings with a national release. Yes, they will be extremely tough to come by, but if you're a customer of our store, you'll have a chance to get them. Get signed up for our email or text list over at abvbarrelshop.com so you don't miss out. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production. <laughs>